This is FYI News 13, brought to you by SSP-TV and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. For your information, a local woman is organizing a fundraiser for the Hazleton Police Department. Find out all about it next. Hi and thanks for watching. I'm Ken Kerr and we've wrapped up all the local information we could fit in a half hour. So let's start unwrapping. Here's our headlines from FYI and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. The community is stepping up to help the Hazleton Police Department. An event called We Are Hazleton, supporting Hazleton Police Department, is being planned for next week. It's a kickoff for a newly created 501c3 foundation to support the Hazleton Police Department. Lori Ogurkis is the organizer of the event, which will be held at the Pines Eatery and Spirits next Thursday, February 18th at 5 p.m. It will feature beverages and appetizers, plus Ostrich Hat will perform. The suggested donation is $20 and there will also be an auction. The goal is to raise $50,000 to help the Hazleton Police Department purchase much needed equipment. Tricky trays and monetary donations are being accepted. Simply go to the group's Facebook page or you can mail donations to We Are Hazleton, Office of Robert Moore CPA, 751 North Church Street, Hazleton. Monoy Township Police are looking for family and friends of a man critically injured after being struck by a car Monday night. The victim has been identified as Luis Velasco and is believed to be from the Shenandoah area. Anyone who knows his family or friends is asked to call Monoy Township Police by calling the Schuylkill County Communication Center at 570-462-1991. For members of the Christian faith, today is Ash Wednesday, the start of the Lenten season. The faithful receive ashes on their forehead in the sign of a cross. People tell me that they like to receive the ashes. It, it gives them a sense that they feel good. They're starting something different. They're starting kind of a, a preparation in a good way and trying to make changes where they want to make changes in their life. And, and that's what Lent is all about. It's a gift. It's a season of uh, repentance, of change, of trying to grow, but also too to move away from those things that we're not happy with and, and to really try to do better gives us that opportunity to really um, focus on uh, the great gift of life and to, to really want to follow in the footsteps of our Lord. Ash Wednesday is a day of fast and abstinence. It begins the 40 days of Lent that culminate on Easter Sunday. Well, last night I had the pleasure of being a guest on Tonight with Max Garcia on Telecaribe, a local Spanish language channel right here in downtown Hazleton. I had a blast. The show is a lot of fun, and Max has guests on a regular basis that are much better than me, like Hazleton Mayor Jeff Cassatt and Mary Malone from the Greater Hazleton Chamber of Commerce. The cool thing is, Max hosts the show in English and Spanish, so it's really for everybody. This is the chance. Connect the community. Connect. We are just one community, not natives, a Hazeltonian community, and Hispanic community. Just we are now Hazelton. And we, when we know we, we, we have the right connection, community, uh, uh, communication, that is the way we go to grow more strong city. And then uh, watch the FY. TV, News 13, watch Telecaribe, watch the other media here because this is the, the way you know how what's going to happen in this city. And you can watch Telecaribe online at telecaribe.com or on YouTube. You can also see it on Service Electric Cablevision Channel 299. You do need the Hispanic package to access it. Tonight with Max Garcia airs at 8 p.m. Anyway, give it a try and watch the Out of Left Field segment Max and I did in Spanish on YouTube. Good times. Gracias, Max Garcia, for inviting me on his show. Well, you've heard of dinner and a movie. Well, how about breakfast and a movie? I'm in. Lisa Sugart has the details. We have details today on a super event, RRR, joined by my good friend Julie Ferry, who is the Public Relations Coordinator for FunFest at the Greater Hazelton Chamber of Commerce. You have a fun idea for kids of all ages, I guess, a movie and a breakfast with a super theme. Absolutely. FunFest is doing another fundraiser. Uh, we work all year long to raise funds to bring this great family-friendly community event to the neighborhood here. Um, so we're teaming up with our friends uh, at the Cinema and Draft House. Uh, Sybil and Tony are kind enough to host us again. We'll be having a movie 
Breakfast fundraiser on Sunday, February the 21st. We'll be showing the movie The Incredibles, which of course, you know, who doesn't love a good superhero movie? Uh, we'll be doing some photos with costume characters to be named at a later date. Maybe we can get our good friend Kenny Cara to dress up for us. So everybody, you know, give him a little nudge in the right direction. Mm -hmm. um, you can get tickets online or by calling the chamber office, stopping by. You can also get tickets at Cinema and Draft House. Tickets in advance are $20. Uh, like I said, you can order them online if you go to the chamber website, hazeltonchamber.org. It'll be a great morning of breakfast for the kids, and the kids will get a special souvenir cup. There's a special trailer that Tony at the Cinema and Draft House made up that you can see on our Facebook page if you want to check it out at FunFest Hazelton. So it's a great, fun morning for the kids. Great way to beat those winter blues. And it's a good opportunity to get together with your friends and help us raise money to, to bring this great event to downtown Hazleton. And if people say, why do you need to raise money for FunFest, what does this help pay for? Helps pay for everything that we bring to the area, uh, for all of our entertainment, for all of the logistics that are involved, um, for our trash cleanup to, to help with our security that we bring in for the weekend, for everything that, that we do. None of this event that we put on is free. Um, so we do need to raise a lot of funds to, to help with the event on. All right. Well, this sounds like a great way to have fun and help out FunFest at the same time. The incredible Sunday, February 21st, 9 a.m., the Cinnamon Draft House in West Hazleton. It's breakfast and a movie. Go to hazeltonchamber.org, call the chamber, or go to the Cinnamon and Draft House to get the tickets. Get them early because they'll be cheaper, but you can get them at the door as well, correct? Absolutely. All righty. So come on out and support FunFest on the 21st of February. You'll have a great time watching a great movie with a lot of fun people, and it's all for a great cause. Thanks, Lisa and Julie. If I'm dressing up like a superhero, I call Batman right now. Coming up on FYI, Standard Speaker Sports Editor Dave Seaman is here to talk about the Hazleton Area Cougars Conference Championship clinching victory over Coughlin. And right after this break, it's another hunting segment with Wild Bout Hunt and host Dennis Gann. This is FYI News 13, brought to you by SSPTV and the Hazelton Standard Speaker. I know we're in the midst of winter, but it won't be long until hunting season is officially here. And there are things that you can plan to do now so that you're ready when it does arrive. We are pleased to welcome back Dennis Gantz, the producer and host of Wild Bout Hunt, and soon to be seen right here on SSPTV and the Hunt Channel as well. Dennis, what can our hunter viewers out there do to get ready? I know you said they can uh, prep for some food plots, and I'm not too familiar with that. So tell me what that's all about. Yeah, one of the things that we uh, we have the ability to do uh, as outdoorsmen, hunters, and, and in Pennsylvania here is we can plant food plots, and it's basically planting crops. It's like farming. Um, you know, you're, some states allow you to bait for, for the animals that you're hunting. Pennsylvania does not allow you to bait, but you can plant food plots, and food plots can be anything from corn to clover to beets to anything like that that's going to help provide nourishment for the animal, and uh, it's something Something that you, you can clover is a great one people like to plant clover a lot because that comes up annually you, know, you can plant it once and it's pretty good for three to four or five years um, just a matter of doing a little bit of fertilizing and spraying um, but what you can be doing now not deer season is over is you can be checking maybe a current food plot that you already have and uh, you know seeing if there's anything that you want to do different to it, see how it came up this year. Maybe it was the first time that you planted it. So you want to kind of be inspecting that and say, what do I need to do differently? Did I turn the soil or did I just rake it? Um, and start planning for the planting season, which usually starts up around the end of March, April sometime, depending upon how wet it gets here in Pennsylvania. Uh, the other thing you can be doing is looking for new locations. And food plots don't need to be big. Um, people think, you know, a couple acre food plot is something I need. No, food plot can be something that's just about as big as the area that we're sitting in the studio right now um, to uh, a half an acre or a quarter of an acre. They don't need to be big. It just needs to be in an area that uh, it's going to provide uh, a little bit of food and nourishment for deer that you might be able to get back into. Um, so start taking a look at that. And then when you get into the April and uh, late mid-March you can start clearing those areas start moving the sticks and stuff away and getting ready and then they usually in April it's time to start turning the soil and you may want to test your soil for the pH and there's meters that you can buy out there and you can check that out and they give you all the instructions of what you should be looking for uh, we plant bucks and beards food plot blends that's one of our sponsors here at Wild Bow Hunting uh, a great company um, had a great time with them at the ATA 
Um, what's worked well for us is show, what's called Showtime Spring, which has a mixture of clovers, rape, rye, um, and some different kind of beets in there. And that's been a, a really productive food plot blend for us, and uh, the deer love it. And uh, it's literally all the, all the other critters, they just like coming to it. <laughs> Well, if you love what Dennis is telling you here as we do these segments here on FYI, mm -hmm. you're going to love the show even more because Wild Bout Hutton will be premiering in April. So if people want to find out, they want to learn more about it, where do they go right now? They can go to our website, www.wildabouthunting.com. They can check out any of our social media on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Follow us everywhere that we're at. And if you have a question, email us at info at wildabouthunting.com. We'll be more than happy to answer it. And he will be more than happy to answer it. I guarantee you that. <laughs> Listen, thank you so much. You're always a wealth of information, and we are so excited. Welcome aboard. We can't wait to see the first episode of Wild Bout Hunting. Thank you. We're excited to be here. Time now for FYI News 13 Weather. Bring it on, Mother Nature, Jack Frost, Old Man Winter, whoever you are. We made it through the snow, and next up, it's the cold, and it needs to be taken seriously. We are in a hazardous weather outlook for later this week. Here's News 13 weather from the National Weather Service. Now tonight, a slight chance of snow showers, mostly cloudy. Our low will be 15 degrees. On Thursday, it gets very cold. A chance of snow showers during the day, mainly after 8 a.m., mostly cloudy. Well, behind your 17, but the wind chill, it will feel like negative 1, and we'll have wind gusts as high as 31 miles per hour. On Thursday night, partly cloudy will get down to 6 degrees with the wind chill. It will feel like negative 6. On Friday, it's partly sunny with a high near 20. Friday night, 30% chance of snow showers, mostly cloudy. Our low will be 6 degrees once again. On Saturday, partly sunny and cold, the high only 10 degrees. And then Saturday night, we get the worst of it, partly cloudy with a low around negative 6 degrees. On Sunday, sunny with a high near 11. And then Sunday night, partly cloudy, a low of 4 degrees. We are back here at Holy Family Academy educating you about a Catholic education and we're with Don Basic. He is the principal here. It's always fun to be back and, you know, part of the crowd. It's always a pleasure to have you here. Well, thanks for having us. So today our focus is on registration. If you're out there and you're looking at an education for your child, Holy Family Academy may be an option for you. Absolutely, and, and we at Holy Family Academy feel that we are certainly a good option, probably the best option for families from our local area. Um, we, we are in the, in the process of doing our registrations right now for the 2016-2017 school year, and I would certainly recommend and suggest very strongly that any family that's interested in registering or taking a look at Holy Family Academy, uh, call the school office mm -hmm. at 570-455-9431. Ask one of the secretaries, either Mrs. Bonoma or Mrs. Kennedy, mm -hmm. for a registration packet. Also ask if uh, we can arrange for a shadowing day for the student coming in. I think it's very important that the kids come in and see what kinds of things we expect and what kinds of things we do here at Holy Family mm -hmm. before that final decision is made. Also very strongly uh, recommend part of the application packet is a uh, form to, to apply for scholarships that are available through the Diocese of Scranton or through our local uh, foundations that we deal with. Uh, please get that filled out and sent in as soon as possible. Uh, don't wait until the summer months because mm -hmm. unfortunately um, if you're looking at scholarship money, sometimes that money is kind of all given out by that time. Um, if you're not looking at scholarship money, we have some classes that are now getting toward capacity. Mm -hmm. And we don't want to have to, even though it would be a, a nice thing to have a waiting list, we don't want to have to, to disappoint someone by saying, I'm sorry, you have to wait on a waiting list. I always say there needs to be a call to action. So the call to action is what kind of education, what our parents getting from this school if they send their child here. And, and the, the education that their children will get is second to none mm -hmm. um, at Holy Family Academy. Uh, I would strongly suggest that if they have friends that have children coming here, that they talk with them, ask them about the teachers, ask them about the, uh, the curricula that we follow, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm sure that they're going to be pleased with the responses. All right. Join us each and every week right here on FYI while we stop by HFA. 
Check out Holy Family Academy's historic gym, St. Joseph's Gym, on an all-new Out of Left Field, now on SSP TV. Well, actually, right now on SSP TV, it's your midday winning lottery numbers. Pick 2, 2, 6, pick 3, 7, 6, 1, pick 4, 7, 2, 3, 9, pick 5, 0, 3, 6, 4, 5. All right, here's our home of the week. That was just reduced $20,000. This beautiful three-bedroom, two-bath home sits in a secluded section of Eagle Rock Resort with year-round views of the mountains. It comes with a second lot next next door and is just over an acre and backs up to 165 acres of unused land. Enjoy 64 free rounds of golf per year, unlimited use of the driving range, unlimited ski passes and complimentary use of the fitness center. Call or email for more details. FYI, we'll be right back with sports. This is FYI News 13 Sports. Welcome to another Dave Day on FYI as Dave Seaman, the sports editor at the Standard Speaker, joins us. I'll let Dave gloat in a little bit about just how close you were to nailing your Super Bowl prediction, Dave. You did the best of the SSP TV sports staff. But first, let's start with the Hazleton area Cougars. They win the Wyoming Valley Conference Division One Championship, wrapping it up with a win over Coughlin last night. Dave, you covered the game. I read your article in the Standard Speaker, and right in the lead, you mentioned Al Stewart's Year of the Cat. That's the song they've been playing after Cougar victories. Did you Shazam that, or are you just a fan of the song? Were you the only one who really noticed that this year? I'm probably the only one that noticed that too, or, or somebody who's in charge of the sound system at the at the high school. Uh, maybe athletic director Fred Barletta. Some, somebody might have put that in there, but uh, Coach Joseph might have had something to do with it too. But the team has always played up to that this year, that, that they wanted this to be their year in the Wyoming Valley Conference, and the Cougars went out and did that. Definitely have been living up to expectations. And Dave, they ran the gauntlet last week. You, last week, was, they put in a lot of work, you said. Yeah, last week they had the uh, you know emotional game against Crestwood. Uh, they bounced back. They had two tough road trips. Uh, uh, not necessarily, uh, you know, opponents in the in the Cougars class right now, Tunkhannock and Pittston area, but uh, you still had to make the road trip to Tunkhannock, not an easy trip, and then you had to go to Pittston area just uh, two nights after that as well. So, uh, and the Cougars uh, showed their resiliency coming back after the emotional win over Crestwood and bouncing back and doing what they do, which is win. They still have one more regular season game to go against Berwick. That's on Thursday. And in your article, Dave, it was Bobby Planudis who said that Coach Joseph has been stressing perfection to the Cougars all year. And you said they're even adopting or taking a page maybe out of Penn State football's book. Yeah, a little bit because uh, I've heard Coach Joseph say on more than one occasion, and even his players, it's their goal to win every quarter, to be 1-0 and after every quarter. And, of course, Coach Franklin at Penn State always said they want to be 1-0 and after every game. Well, we're still waiting for that after no, after the, last, uh, the end of last season. But... Uh, as it applies to the Cougars, uh, they have definitely done their job to go out every quarter, attack every quarter with, uh, with purpose, with motivation, and that, that, that's been their motivation. It's been their MO all season, and uh, obviously it's worked so far. Dave, can the year of the CAC continue into the state playoffs? I know there's one more regular season game, but after that districts, the Cougars could get through that and maybe go to the state playoffs. I haven't really taken a look at the entire District 2 field and include Williamsport from District 4. Uh, yeah, the District uh, District 2 for sub-regional is going to be very difficult this year. Uh, you got Williamsport. Uh, don't be deceived by their 11-8, 11-9 record. Uh, they play a tough schedule year in, year out. They'll be very athletic. Uh, they play tough games against Cougars in each of the last two postseasons. Abington Heights, of course, beat the Cougars in the district sub-regional final last year. Uh, they have some key players back from last year, too. They're going to be tough to beat. And uh, a team like Scranton, which upset uh, Abington Heights earlier in the season, too, is also in the field. So you got to be prepared to play every game. And if they adopt that mantra of 1-0 and after every quarter and take each game at a t at a at a as it comes, uh, Cougars should be in good shape. All right, Dave, now let's go down south. Schuylkill League, Marion Catholic, the girls and the Shenandoah Valley boys are getting ready for the Schuylkill League playoffs. Boys will, or excuse me, the girls will tip off tonight. The boys tomorrow, both teams playing Pottsville. Dave, Marion, it's going to be a tall task for both teams. However, if the Super Bowl taught us anything, defense can win championships and that Marion Catholic D has been carrying them all year. Uh, definitely. The Phillies have been known for their uh, a D under coach Paul Bruto. Uh, they're going to have to ride that uh, in, in the Schuylkill League playoffs. Uh, it's certainly going to help them against Pottsville. Pottsville, you know, won Division One. Uh, no easy task, one of the toughest divisions in all of Pennsylvania, you know, outlasting the likes of Blue Mountain and North Schuylkill. So Pottsville is going to be tough, but uh, Mar Marion plays a tough schedule to get them ready for the postseason. And uh, the Phillies hopefully will be ready in their case. 
And Shenandoah Valley, Dave, I covered them last week. We did a feature on Joel Santana, and their coach said when Joel's making the players around him better, they're at their best. He really did in that game, as the whole team was making highlights in that one. Dave, the Super Bowl, you said the Broncos would win it 24-17. The final was 24-10. The Broncos win, so congratulations, sir. Definitely nailed it. I want to talk to you about Peyton Manning. After the game, he mentioned Budweiser. He kissed Papa John, but he did not sing Chicken Parm. You taste so good. I was disappointed about that. Um, but on a serious note, the legacy of Peyton Manning, everyone knows he's going to go down as one of the greatest. What did you always enjoy, though, about watching Peyton Manning just play football? Just that he was in control of the game. No matter which offense he was uh, in charge of, he, he was the man in charge. And uh, the players responded to him. They always say, uh, you know, great players make those around them better. Uh, well, Peyton Manning, definitely the case. I mean, uh, you know, Marvin Harrison is going to be a Hall of Famer this year uh, in, in Indianapolis. Uh, definitely became better. Edgar and James, another top flight running back. And that offense really took off. You, you really think the Colts could have won a couple more Super Bowls when Peyton Manning was there. And they came close. I mean, if not for another great player in Tom Brady, maybe they could, we'd be talking about the Colts being a, you know, a multi-dynasty team. But um, when you look at his legacy, is a winner, a competitor, and uh, I think that's underestimated about Peyton Manning too, is his competitiveness too. But uh, just the way he made everybody around him better and just the command he had of those offenses. Dave, thank you so much. We appreciate your time. Follow Dave and the Hazelton Area Cougars in the Standard Speaker. It's Wednesday, and here's some delicious alliteration. It's Signature Steak Night at Bottlenecks. All of their signature steaks are only $9.95, plus bottomless soup and salad for only $2.95. Hey golfers, have we got the perfect vacation spot for you. Myrtle Beach. Signature golf packages built and reserves the finest and most reasonably priced Myrtle Beach vacations. From scheduling your golf tee times to making your hotel accommodations. Oceanfront to golf course villas. Mark Pass and a Hazleton native has been doing this for 10 years. Expect excellent customer service. Local knowledge of all the courses and the best golf vacation of a lifetime. Call now to learn all of the specials that Signature Golf Packages can offer you or your group. 866-462-9885 or book now at SignatureGolfPackages.com. Good evening, everyone, and here's tonight's Talk of the Town report. One announcement for this evening. Luzerne County Head Start is accepting applications in Luzerne and Wyoming counties. Head Start offers a range of comprehensive programs for children from birth to age 5 and also pregnant women. All programs are free of charge, but families must meet criteria to qualify. For more information, just give them a call, 570-829-6231. That's tonight's Talk of the Town. News 13 would like to send sincere condolences to the family and friends of these recently departed. Marion M. Storaska of Beaver Township. Funeral is Sunday at 3 p.m. from the Trinity Lutheran Church. Friends may call Sunday from 1 to 3 p.m. at the church. The Harmon Funeral Home is assisting the family with the arrangements. Susan M. Korch of McAdoo Heights. Funeral is Saturday at 10 a.m. at the Damiano Funeral Home. Friends may call Saturday from 9 to 10 a.m. Helen S. Gallagher, formerly of Hazleton. Mass is Friday at 9.30 a.m. in the St. Gabriel's Church. Arrangements are by the Boyle Funeral Home. Samuel N. Sist Sr., formerly of Hazleton. Memorial is Monday at 10 a.m. in the Good Shepherd Church. Arrangements are by the Reichel Funeral Home. Martha Kordalski, formerly of Hazleton. Funeral is Saturday at 9.30 a.m. from the Frank J. Bonin Funeral Home. Friends may call Friday from 5 to 8 p.m. Leo P. Prosick of Brandonville. Funeral is Saturday at 11 a.m. at the St. John's Lutheran Church. Friends may call Saturday from 9 to 11 a.m. The Stauffer Bresnick Funeral Home is in charge of arrangements. Martha Sable of Morrisville. Funeral is Monday at 11 a.m. at the St. John the Evangelist Church. Friends may call Sunday from 3 to 5 p.m. at the James J. Doherty Funeral Home and Monday from 10 to 11 a.m. at the church. And Dolores L. Stefanik of Allentown. Mass is Friday at 10.30 a.m. in the Cathedral of St. Catherine of Siena. Friends may call Friday from 9 to 10 a.m. at the J.S. Buckholder Funeral Home. If you're not a strong swimmer, please bring your floaties tomorrow as we jump into the deep end for some diving with Hazleton Area's Jordy Soto. We'll see you then. Take it easy, everyone.